Mr. Sams? No, it's Mr. Lewis. Mr. Lewis. Yeah, Merriweather Lewis. M Merriweather Lewis. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of him. He's like the Lewis and Clark guy. Yeah, did some exploring. You know, so why are you wearing Merriweather Lewis stuff? Because we're talking about Lewis structures today. Lewis structures? Yeah. Do you realize... Did, uh, Lewis structures, he, didn't he like build some buildings like while he was out, build a cabin or two while he was exploring the, the wrong Lewis structure? Wrong Lewis, Mr. Sams. Oh. I think what you're thinking about is the other Lewis. My mistake. I, I stand I, corrected. I think what you're thinking, Mr. Sams, is of this Lewis, right? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but we're Sacagawea, actually going to... yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think we're going to be learning about what Mr. Gilbert Lewis did. Oh. The uber-smart scientist guy that you obviously must not be, you know. Because yeah, well. this is the real Lewis oh, okay. of the Lewis dot structure. I'm right? a history major. What can you? That must be your problem. Yeah. Yes. Well, he is a part of history. Gilbert Lewis. Okay. Science history. You must uh, have your uh, subject matters yeah. backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay. What well. can you do? All right. <laughs> We're in section 8.5 of your textbook, ladies and gentlemen. How do you like my southern accent? I've been working on it all day. Well, it's better than nondescript. <laughs> Irish, Russian, Scottish, French. What you talk about? Yeah, that one. Yes, okay. <laughs> hey, we're going to learn about the 8.5. Okay, textbook, Zumdahl textbook, if you're trying to figure this out. We'll talk about Lewis stuff later. All right, we're talking about how we form ionic compounds. So, you know, in that whole chart about different types of bonds, we're going to focus now for a little bit on ionic compounds. Now, recall, ionic bonds is a bond between a metal and a nonmetal. Right? Yep. And so we're going to look at the energies associated with this. There's this new thing that you haven't learned about. It's called the lattice. The energy. lattice energy. And that's the energy that's found in a lattice. Duh. Yeah. Right? And it is the reaction of the metal in the gaseous state plus the anion in the gaseous state to make the metal. So this is the energy that's released. Um, as the ions bond. Yeah. And does that mean it's always negative? It actually is always negative. Okay. Lattice energies are always negative because they always release energy. Um, and some are more negative than others, you mm -hmm. know. Or, and so when we talk about a high lattice energy, we're actually talking about a high negative value. So it's actually a lower one if you think about it. But, yeah. But energy, Larger quantity of yeah, energy going Yeah, because it's, it's important to understand that um, there is no such thing as negative energy. That doesn't exist. But the negative sign just tells you the direction of flow. Right. So uh, exothermics are negative and endothermics are positive. So mm -hmm. this is always um, exothermic. Yeah. Okay? So hopefully that kind of features. And it applies to something we've learned before. If you recall, the lattice energy equation, or this is actually Coulomb's law. You know, actually, I think we did Coulomb's law and that last time, and I think we were doing more of a uh, lattice energy equation because Coulomb's law has an R squared in there because that's a force. Yeah. Yeah we, yeah, we did it wrong. But it's basically the same concept here. Energy just doesn't have an R. Uh, it has R on the bottom. So where Q1 is the charge of, say, the sodium ion. We kind of talked about this before. And the chloride ion, say, if you're putting sodium with chloride, the Q1 would be positive 1, and the Q2 would be negative 1. And R is the distance between the atoms. Okay? All right, so let's kind of talk about how we would do this. These types of problems can get kind of crazy. And it really, I think, has been a confusing thing. It's not so terribly difficult. All right, there are some steps to make this happen. So you start with the metal and its standard state, and then the anion in its standard state, and then each step requires energy. And then we're going to try and make um, lithium fluoride. So we're going to form lithium fluoride. There it is. I think I need a blank screen for this. So we want to form some lithium fluoride. So watch as I go through this step by step. All right, if I have lithium metal in a solid state, that's its standard state, mm -hmm. and I want to turn it, first of all, to a gas. All right. You're going to have to put some energy in to do that. That's going to require some energy. Yep. And this, by the way, is called the heat of sublimation. Because if you turn something from a solid to a gas, then you will sublimate it. Yes. Turning, that's just kind of the definition. Now, um, we have a particular table in your book. If you're using the sixth edition of Zumdahl, it's page 363. But this requires 161 kilojoules of energy. All right. And then if I take the lithium as a gas and I turn it into the lithium ion as a gas, 
that will release one electron. Now, we already learned about what that's ionization called. Ionization energy. A couple of podcasts ago, that's an ionization, ionization energy. That's the energy of the lithium, and that has a particular value. 520. And 520. Where are we getting these numbers? Just from a table in your book. Now, you'll see I'll stop with that. Now, I'm going to take the fluoride, but flu I'm going to take, when you take fluorine, pardon me, by itself, it's a gas, and it always exists as F2. Yep. I want to then turn that into F. Let's just make that, make that half an F2. Yeah, see, that's like a half an F2. Yeah, because I want to basically break the bond. What I'm doing, folks, is I have the FF, that sounds odd, the FF bond, <laughs> and I'm trying to break this bond. And when we put the half, like we did in this reaction, we're taking a half of a, of a uh, half of a mole of it. That's no negative sign there. And that would be called. This is called, and we'll learn about this in the, in this podcast. Actually, that's called the bond energy. And that value is seventy-seven. So this is. These are all endothermic reactions. They all require some energy. All right. But then we have another system. I can take my F gas, and I can turn it into F negative. And actually, you'd have to add one electron on that uh -huh. side. And we've learned about this, too. This electron is called um, the electron affinity. Remember, he wants to gain electrons. Now, recall we said this. When this occurs, it's always negative because he releases energy. And this is negative 328. You know, we forgot to do something, Mr. Sams. <laughs> on this bond energy one, we needed to multiply this 77 by one half. Uh, actually, that the value in the book is given for Oh, uh, okay. If yeah. they give you the full bond energy and they have to cut it in half, usually that's 77. Yeah, the full bond energy is 154 kilojoules. All right. So in this case... Actually, do let's do it that way. Let's say this is 154, and we'll times that by one half, which gives us the 77. Yeah. And now lastly, we can use our lattice energy equation, Li positive gas plus F negative gas makes LIF solid. This is called the lattice energy, we'll call it LE, mm -hmm. and that value is usually quite large and negative. It's negative 1,047 kilojoules. Now, the good news about what you get here is we can now do some uh, cancelizations. Mm -hmm. So I can can't cancelization. The electrons go away. The electrons here go away. Um, I see the lithium gas goes away. Yep. Li plus goes away. So you have Li positive here, and you have Li positive here, so they go and away. And the F minuses go away. F minus is here. Right below. And this is on the same opposite, opposite side. side. It looks doesn't look that well. And I think the F gas. Um, yeah, F gas goes away. Yep. With what? The other F gas. F gas here. So what are you left with? You're left with Li solid plus one-half F2 gas makes LiF solid. Right, so and that's the, the overall reaction of taking solid lithium gas is fluorine and making lithium fluoride. And if you add all these numbers up, negative 617. You get negative 100, 617 or yep, 07, 617. 617 kilojoules per mole. So if you know your steps, you have to know each of the steps. First of all, I took the metal and I um, sublimated it. Then I ionized it. And I was done. And then with the fluoride, I broke the bond, and then I ionized it. And then I added it all up, and that's how you do this. Um, these aren't terribly difficult. Here's a, a better picture of it here. The first step is I took the lithium, and I sublimated it here, as you can see. The solid turned into a gas. That's the only thing that changed. And the second step, it required me to um, ionize it. I turned the lithium into lithium positive. And the next step, I broke the bond, F2, um, and made F, right? So the F2 turned into F. And then we added the lattice energy, and then it all canceled out. Oh, this is the electron affinity. I'm a step ahead. This is the electron affinity, and then this right here is the lattice energy, and the overall change was a negative, so this is an exothermic. So if you take lithium and you react it with fluorine, half of these, um, you will get quite an exothermic reaction. It could probably explode even, so pretty cool to see. All right.